Pops Daylight Donuts, man, they've got the best tasting donuts, sausage wraps, pastries in Northeast Oklahoma. And also, if you'll tell the staff there, hey, Scott Townsend said to give me a large spicy pig, they'll give you a free large spicy sausage wrap. But you have to tell them Scott Townsend sent you. So tell them, hey, Scott Townsend told me to tell you to give me a large spicy pig. So there's the offer. There's the there's the call to action. So go to Pops Daylight Donuts. Say hi to Mark for me. And uh, yeah, go to Pops Daylight Donuts and get you some. The other sponsor is Casterfly Outdoor Adventures. Adventure. That's where it begins. We look to create and document our moments in time while embracing the majestic wonder and beauty of the great outdoors. Our quest is to explore the back roads of the Ozarks, camping, fishing, and just getting lost. Refresh your spirit and join us on our next adventure. Paul and his crew invite you to subscribe to the Castafly Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Welcome to the Scott Townsend Show, brought to you by Dietzo Man Productions. Hey, this is Scott Townsend. Thanks for joining the Scott Townsend Show. And today I have with me special guest, Tyler Cole from OK Bird Control. And a husband, father, three kids, all under five. He has his hands full. Uh, wish him luck. Uh, Tyler, how's it going? Going great. How you doing, Scott? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, it's a, awesome. It's a great. Uh, it's kind of cloudy out, but that's okay. What'd you have for breakfast this morning? What'd you have for breakfast this morning? Uh, well, funny you should ask. Um, the I forget what it's actually called. I'm gonna say the the perfect bar. It's from uh, Starbucks, and they put it in the cold section. And it is, it is a I don't know. I guess it's really healthy for you, but I look at it as kind of like dessert. So after I eat a, a good meal, I like to gnaw on one of those and sometimes first thing in the morning. <laughs> what a way to start the day. Sounds good. Yeah. So Tyler, you're uh, with OK Bird Control, and uh, you and I were talking on LinkedIn not too long ago, and <clears throat> I thought the subject was interesting and for a couple of reasons. Number one, Number one, I like birds and my wife likes birds and, you know, every once in a while, not every once in a while, every night, pretty much, uh, we'll go in the backyard, sit down, watch the red birds, you know, yeah. watch all that stuff. Hate starlings, but, you know, um, uh, so with hummingbirds, we always write down on the calendar what, you know, when they show up. This year, they showed up really late. It was like a yeah. week later. So I think the Texas freeze had maybe something to do with that. But Cold snap. Yeah, but uh, and so then you were uh, talking about uh, okay bird control and and birds as pests and mm -hmm. you know I was thinking about that too, and I never really think of birds as pests until I go and visit like a monument or a historical yeah. building or a, yep. something like that, and then you you know like Oklahoma State you know they have all those all that architecture and. Perfect places for birds to make nests, for and sure. you know, if if you if you think about it for about a second, what's the big deal? But mm -hmm. if you if you think about you know if left unchecked, for you know if you never do anything about it, oh my gosh, yeah, what a problem that is. Definitely. And uh, my brother and I used to work in the. Uh, we spent one summer working down in South Texas and we had to go to this warehouse to pick up some stored equipment that was old. And I mean, there was bird stuff everywhere. Windows were broken out, pigeons inside. Yeah. The whole, everything was covered in pigeon droppings. And uh, so it was pretty gross. I've done a lot of talking here. So how did you get into OK Bird Control? For sure. Uh, before I started working in the, the industry, um, I was tied to the uh, uh, machining welding world. I did that for about 10 years. And one of the employers that I uh, worked for um, didn't kind of, uh, what's the word, um, diversify. 
So they kind of had one customer. And when the price of oil went, whoops, um, yeah. I kind of, I didn't have to look for a new job, but I, my hours got cut pretty big and, um, just believe in God for the right opportunity. And one, of uh, one of my friends at church, uh, actually owns a, uh, uh, a manufacturer of a product that, uh, repels birds. So he needed somebody to help him in the warehouse in the back, uh, getting orders out and that sort of thing. And that, that turned into that other part of that, that 20 hours that made up for that, for that job. Cause I was only working 20 hours and, uh, that was about seven years ago and throughout that time it turned into a full-time job and I just worked at that company learning all about birds learning um worked in sales worked in agriculture um a lot of birds like to consume crops in mass numbers makes farmers really mad Mm. and um trying to save save some of their ammo for them so that's when uh they would call me. I have a solution for them. Um, worked at that company for about six years and um, started my company about two years ago doing it part time. So I'd get a client here and there, um, go help them get rid of their birds. And then it started to be more and more clients and then more and more clients. And oh. then this last January uh, went full time. And on my own with OK Bird Control, been doing it full time um, for about five months now. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I noticed on your website, it's 24 7 service. Yep. Have you ever had anybody call you at 3 a.m. saying, hey, man, I got a, <laughs> I got a bird problem? <laughs> well, uh, yes, I have. Oh, um, yeah. It goes straight to voicemail about that time, though. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I just answer it in the morning when I get there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Why is a bird, uh, why is bird pest control important? Yeah. Um, well, when you're dealing with, uh, your residential job, uh, you got birds making noise in the morning when you're trying to wake up, you got nesting materials clogging up, uh, uh, like air ventilation, um, bird droppings everywhere. It's kind of a nuisance. So for residentials, it's a little bit different when you're talking about commercial, like, I've got some clients that are big oil refineries or chemical plants and with the residential jobs you're dealing with, uh, maybe four birds at the most. One, one of my jobs, I have, um, about a quarter of a million starlings uh, on one site. And it's, uh, it's quite epic to see that in action, especially, uh, when they come to feed at night or when they're feeding all day and then they come to roost on site, um, about Mur- dusk it the, the murmurations what they call it the murmurations. the murmurations are definitely when the birds all flock together and they kind of move in the zigzaggy there's really no actual pattern it's just it's just amazing to see that though right yeah but when you're talking about commercial uh, a, a job size that big the amount of droppings that that produces right um like this specific job site before i started the job they were doing this monthly they were they had about 54 he he told me about 54 50 gallon drums that they would scoop up and fill those up with bird droppings so when you got a bird problem like that you definitely know you got a bird problem Mm -hmm. from a safety uh, standpoint too i mean that makes the wherever you're walking uh slick slippery you know exactly Man, especially those uh, those large goose uh, droppings too. <laughs> yeah. those, those are pretty slick, and uh, I've had some clients call me because, uh, like a bank, for instance. Uh, oh yeah, just just one one of the older ladies was walking in and slipped and fell on uh, mm. on some goose droppings. Mm-hmm. The uh, so what what kind of bird are you? Does it seem like you're after more than any other? What's the most Pro- popular? Probably the number one pest bird would probably be the uh, pigeon. Mm. And then starling and, and house sparrow are kind of neck and neck. They kind of they kind of produce mixed flocks. So when you have starling, sometimes you have sparrows. So it's yeah. mostly not just one specific bird. Um, but pigeon would be definitely the number one. 
Yeah, I hadn't thought about that too. When you said a while ago that they had to scoop up and uh, what, 55 gallon drums, barrels, whatever? Yeah, 53 actual barrels per month full of droppings. So you got to pay somebody to do that, which I hadn't yes. thought of either. And for sure, then you got to handle it. <laughs> yes. Um, wow. I, I, on a job like that, I really don't offer my cleanup services. It's not really like a job like that. They have maintenance workers to clean stuff like that up for me. Right. Um, Your job actually, is just to get the birds out of there. Exactly. I get them out of there, repel them out of there, uh, keep them from just making it uh, nice for them to be there. What? Uh, so talk about the different ways to repel that you've got, you know, several different uh ways to go about um scaring mm -hmm. off birds mm -hmm. um like three in particular that i can think of can you kind of go into the different uh, ways that you go about uh, yeah there's there's exclusion um which just if you have a specific area on your property that you don't want birds um then you would do like a spike or a netting um oh, like yeah. big box retailers or just some other places like that. It's kind of um, not an eyesore, but people don't like to see big spikes coming out of their building. So oh, yeah. that's you kind of try and do that in the background. If there's like a, a loading dock or something like that, um, that's where like not a not the front of a building. Um, right. That's where you would see something like that. Hmm. Um, you got the scare devices, which are your scare owls. Uh, for for uh, uh, geese, it'd be something like a coyote, something that there's a predator. What's funny is like the you see a lot of companies take it on themselves to take care of the the bird problem internally, and I I definitely applaud that. But they'll put a scare owl up and just leave it there, and yeah. it'll work for a couple days. But with with scare devices, you kind of constantly got to move them. Or I wondered about get, that. Yeah, they're just gonna get used to it. Yeah, I'll drive by one piece of uh, property here in town and there's a pond in the backyard mm -hmm. and I saw some coyote, one or two yep. coyote statues. And I, and so I always thought, huh, they just must like coyotes, you know, that's cool. <laughs> so when you mentioned uh, coyotes for geese, yeah, I guess that's what they're doing really is uh, it just, that just dawned on me. They're probably trying to scare yeah. away the Canadian geese or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's science versus Mother Nature. And, you know, it's also trial and error. There's no real silver bullet that takes care of every bird problem. Um, sometimes you have to incorporate one, use the other. What I what I usually lead with is a product called Avatrol Easy Blend. And it's uh, it's basically a grain bait with baiting trays and uh, they're just wooden trays. But it's mostly rooftop work. And I'll put oh, yeah. the trays up, up on the roof and I'm feeding them basically wheat, milo, and a cracked corn. Um, and it's great for mixed flocks because even the, the small birds can eat the grains. It's not big whole kernels of corn. Um, so they, I, I come out once a, once a week for about a month, uh, put the trays out, make sure the birds are feeding off of it. And then that's when I come in the next month with the Avatrol Easy Blend. And it's designed to scare the flocks away. Um, basically, the birds eat it. It affects them like there's a predator in the area. So the birds that consume the Avatrol Easy Blend, they uh, kind of vocalization a little weird, uh, flapping the wings. And the other birds around see that bird reacting like there's a predator. So they get scared and then they fly away. Hmm. So it's one month of the pre-baiting and then one month of the live baiting. And then once a month coming back, just to monitor um, and see if there's any new bird activity. Because those, those birds that are treated like that, they'll never come back to the site. They associate the, uh, the actual building, the rooftop with danger, not actually the food. Oh. So that's, that's usually what I lead with and that's usually the most effective way. So the, the Avatrol or Avatrol, does it, mm -hmm. uh, does it kill the bird that eats it? It can, it is, it is a pesticide. And usually we come in with a one to 40 ratio. It's a really high diluted ratio. So um, the birds that do uh, perish are usually the, the dominant flock members in that 
in that flock that get in there at the very beginning when the food's there and just kind of eat it all up. Um, but once you get some reactions, uh, then those birds will, will fly away. So is there any uh, chance of secondary uh, poisoning or something you know, like if a coyote take, for example, or something <laughs> eats the dead bird that ate the avatrol, does it hurt the, mm -hmm. does it pass along to the second generation or whatever? It actually doesn't. Um, it's just quickly metabolized throughout the bird. As soon, I mean, it takes a lot of, uh, burns a lot of uh, calories trying to keep those bird uh, wings flapping. So it, it pretty much goes in and then goes out. So there is no secondary poisoning okay. at all. Yeah. And it is weight based. So I'm putting up out enough bait for basically a few little birds. So if it affects, let's say a cat or something, they're going to have to eat a lot more than what I'm putting out. Uh, you, you mentioned crop control a while ago, mm -hmm. farmers uh, wanting the birds out of there. Um, I didn't know that was a problem, um, yeah. but uh, can you talk about that for a little bit? What, uh, what, are, what are farmers, what's the problem farmers have with all these birds? Yeah, there's, there's a, I mean, you got your farmer and then you got your, your, uh, your cow calf operator, your feedlot, your um, feed yard. So with that, it's basically birds pooping on, the, on their actual food and getting the water contaminated. And then those horses, those cows, um, whatever, eating that contaminated food, vet bills go, go high to uh, kind of counteract whatever's going on internally with mm. those animals. Um, with crops, um, you've seen, maybe not in real life, but maybe on, on TV, just those murmurations mm -hmm. um, and how many, you know, it, it can be any, anywhere from a thousand starlings to you know i have a job that has a quarter million starlings uh but those flocks can go up to about a million and the and then they land on a crop and just consume all that that wheat that soybean um and it can be pretty devastating i wish i had the numbers in front of me about the crop loss per year but i know uh there's a b attached to it like a billion right so i just i know that farmers and uh, uh, people like that can definitely uh, be affected by, by profit loss, by grain consumption, mm -hmm. by gr contamination, uh, mm -hmm. all sorts of stuff like that. So what did farmers used to do in the past before there were these electronic and different ways of scaring birds away? I mean, like you shotguns or? Uh, I would say shotguns. I would say the scarecrows probably. Uh, oh, scarecrows, yeah probably derived from that um i would say bird like definitely shotguns um loud noises pans banging pans um hmm. uh, it's been a lot of uh you know probably poisoning somehow mm -hmm. um i would say mostly probably shotguns yeah yeah the uh so you talked about the three ways of uh repelling birds you've got the exclude what was the exclusion Mm -hmm. And you've got the uh, uh, repellents. Yeah. And then the scare, device. scare devices. Yeah. So, you know, I've, people probably don't realize what's going on at the airport. Now, the airport is a place yeah. where I can definitely see Yeah, you really need to keep your bird population under control. Mm -hmm. uh, For because sure. you don't want bird strikes. You know, I just saw a video yesterday of uh, a plane having like eight or nine bird strikes and they had to turn mm -hmm. around and go back. Um, and so it's that screeching sound that you hear in the parking garage, you know, you can, mm -hmm. hear the, and I've had people ask, you know, mention, so what is that? Why do, why do they have all these birds under here? Yeah. And I'm thinking, well, that's a, that's a, that's a recording to keep the, all the birds away, you know? Yeah, for sure. Hmm. And that's your like international airport, like Tulsa international, there's, Probably, I mean, if I had to guess, probably 15 different hangers, commercial hangers, like different businesses, and they individually have to take care of their bird problems. And then you have the actual international airport, um, different areas, runways, different thing, and then uh, terminals, even the entrance to walk in, like the southwest area, there's, there's birds, there's starlings. You get there early in the morning on a Monday for a 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. flight, you'll mm -hmm. definitely hear them, definitely see them. 
Yeah. Um, and it's an issue with those bird droppings. I mean, there's about 60 plus different types of diseases associated with, with bird droppings. I was going to, I was going to ask you about that. So there really is, there really is some kind of uh, contamination or a, a sickness or w w what's going on there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Sal salmonella, um, like a, probably in the early nineties, there was a peanut um, facility that made peanuts um, made peanut butter, all sorts of products like that. And they had a pigeon infestation um, up on top of the roof, uh, tin roof, holes in it, probably where the rivets are, um, just a leaky roof. Mm. Sorry. Uh, leaky roof. Um, so when it rained, of course, those droppings went down those holes, dropped into um, that batch of peanuts, that batch of peanut oil batch of peanut butter got sent out it was all uh rooted back to those pigeons up on the roof so they're wow. they're definitely yeah there definitely is uh the disease factor you have to look out for and the ectoparasites that they carry you know ticks bed bugs um any kind of just little creature like that you don't want in your house you don't want at mm -hmm. the hotel you're staying in you don't want that at the airport getting on your luggage i mean mm -hmm. that's kind of a stretch but you know at your house oh yeah definitely yeah. you know when you think of when i think about birds you know at, at first you think oh they're cute little birds you know pretty and they are yeah uh, they are <clears throat> from a from a backyard perspective but for sure if you've ever opened up a birdhouse or had to clean out a purple martin house and you mm -hmm. see how messy they are it, it's, yeah it's uh, pretty gross yeah. And what's, uh, what's interesting when I, when I go on, uh, on-site consults, um, when we actually go on the roof and they show me the, uh, exactly where, where the infestation is and there's nesting materials and there's bird droppings, even before the pandemic, I would always have a, uh, N93 mask and I would always put it on just to let them know, you know, I'm trying to protect myself, but let right. them kind of demonstrate the severity of it. Cause when you're kicking up those nesting materials and um mm -hmm. that's when the bird stuff gets in the air those little dust particles and that's when it can get in your lungs mm -hmm. so, so when the bird when the birds dropping when they when they dry up and they get kicked around in the air that's kind of when you have to uh watch out especially when it's a a lot of droppings um that's when that's when i that's why i put the mask on I wish I would have known that back in 82 when I was in that warehouse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of dust. I mean, yeah. Ooh, man, One of the uh, jobs I was at uh, earlier this week, um, the guy I'm driving around with, he told me a guy d just got pooped on by a pigeon and he was very livid. He's just a maintenance guy working, probably welding or something. Just got pooped on his helmet and he threw his helmet down. He was so mad. Um, you know, that's uh, you got to think about your workers, uh, mm -hmm. especially when they're day in and day out working in the stuff. Right. Um, you got to protect them, too. So, if, you know, it's a huge safety factor. You know, slips, trips or falls, you know, mm -hmm. it's uh, disease control. Um, yeah. You've got that when you've got that big, uh, when you've got that big a uh, bird population, you for know, sure. residential, you probably don't have much of a problem, you know, uh, for the most part. Yeah except for starlings up in the uh, brickwork, you know, up in the gym, mm -hmm. whatever. How do you yeah. take care of something like that? For sure. Uh, each job is a <clears throat> little different, you know, you, uh, by law, you can't really touch bird nests when there's, when there's eggs in there, even if it's uh, oh, a know that. unprotected bird. Um, as soon as the, the hatchling, as soon as they uh, actually leave the nest, that's when you can move it. Um, so it's kind of nest removal. Um, you know, they're, they're starlings, they're sparrows, they're really small birds. So they can, you'd be surprised what kind of cracks and crevices and holes they can find themselves in. Uh -huh. Um, I've had a client with a starling climb up the, uh, the, uh, the dryer chute vent. Oh yeah. Uh, peck its way through that little it was, I think it was a probably a plastic shield peck its way through there and find a home in that little, uh, uh, little space looking tube. Yeah. And had to, had to retract a starling from that. That was, <laughs> that was pretty interesting. Um, 
Wow. Unfortunately, it, it had died. Their mm-hmm. uh, their uh, um, clothes started to smell kind of kind of dingy. <laughs> and wow. uh, yeah, the uh, one of the questions I had that you just uh, uh, tapped onto there for a second was, are birds protected by law? So I guess you kind of answered that with the if there's a nest with uh, little birds in there, you can't touch it. Are there any other laws uh, that birds are protected by? Yeah, I mean, when it comes to somebody that's uh, like an employee, employer that needs to get birds, like there are, I mean, most birds are protected except for your your starling pigeon and uh, house sparrow. Um, the Migratory Bird Treaty Act it was enacted and, and it protects all, all birds um, except for those three birds. Um, hmm. But there are depredation orders you can get just working for um, the previous company that I worked for, we get a lot of calls uh, uh, like a magpie or a raven. Um, it's oh, kind of yeah. gross, but like the magpie swooping down and getting at the eyeballs of baby sheep, plucking mm-hmm. those out. Yeah. And just stuff like that. And then oh, you have goodness. wineries. You got wineries with uh, oh, birds. Yeah hitting those grapes, but not really consuming them, just putting their beaks in there and then flying off. And then you got a uh, uh, kind of a wasted product right there. Yeah. So there are, there are, I mean, you work with your local wildlife department and they can uh, kind of help you um, get that depredation order and then uh, report whatever happens back to them. Um, Yeah. So they are, most birds are protected except for those three. Yeah. That's really interesting. Well, Tyler, thanks for stopping by and visiting. Is there anything else you want to tell us before we close it up? Uh, you know, we don't hate birds. We, we love birds too. For instance, we have a, uh, a house finch that just moved in to our, uh, actually our front door at our house. We have a wreath and before we even knew it, there was a nest there. Um, and then a mama bird, you know, yeah. had four little eggs in there mm-hmm. threw a fifth egg in there and now she's uh incubating them we're just waiting for those uh little birds to hatch so we creep open that door and we, we shut it really softly <laughs> kind of trained our kids not to slam that door open because those, right. those eggs could fall out uh we're just we're really excited about these little birds and see what happens to them we had the exact same thing happen to us a wreath on the front door and uh, yeah. so my wife uh, wouldn't let us go out wouldn't let me go out the front door anymore i had to go out to the back <laughs> until those eggs were hatched and everybody was gone but yeah. uh yeah that's really that's really cool but yeah so you know there's there's the pros and the cons and the pros sure. are awesome you know bird watchers and things exactly. like that the cons are <clears throat> You know, one of the things I think of when if I go up to a, like you just mentioned a big, a big box retail store, or something yeah, like that, and you see bird nests that are being built in the letters of, uh huh, whatever the store, you know, like uh, Target maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you think the my first impression is is that they don't really care about, you know, if they're letting junk up in there and their logo yeah. on the building and there's yeah nests all up in there then Mm -hmm. there's something about that that's a little off-putting to me it's kind of like they they don't uh, pay attention to the details or take care of the details yeah so uh yeah i can see that so yeah i mean if people want to get a hold of you um i I never knew this was a business uh until uh, i ran into you on linkedin so Mm -hmm. if someone needs more information or you know needs to contact you how do they get in touch with you yeah, we have a website, um, okbirdcontrol.com. Um, really active on LinkedIn. I have a, a truck I drive around in, uh, kind of mobile advertising. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would say the majority would just go to the website, okbirdcontrol.com. It's got all the contact information, uh, questions you may have. Um, yeah, we're here We're here to help. Um, yeah, if you need any help with uh, bird control for your business, uh, refinery, warehouses, um you know I, I especially think of architectural monuments or yeah uh, city buildings yeah. state buildings you know you always see those spikes or whatnot uh, mm-hmm. away. yeah for good reason 
Uh, just get in touch with Tyler Cole. He'll get you all set up. <laughs> so for Tyler Cole, this is Scott Townsend. Thanks for joining the Scott Townsend Show. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you later. Scott Townsend Show is a Deedso Man production. For more episodes, visit the Scott Townsend Show YouTube channel, listen on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. Scott.